Welcome in and ski to you all. Uh, this is another edition of the PHNX d podcast right here on PHNX. My name is Derek Montia, occasionally known as your mayor of PHNX. This is my vice mayor, your Thunderstick, the one and only Jesse Friedman. Uh, and of course, we are going to be joined here shortly by uh, one of our one of our favorite Diamondbacks fans. But Jesse, what are you doing with yourself on, on an off day for the Diamondbacks? Do you I don't, know what to do with yourself? I don't know. I was like kind of looking forward to it mm-hmm. because I've been working entirely too many hours over the last week and a half. But now that it's here, I don't know what to do with yeah, myself. You, I bet you drove to Chase Field today. By I accident, did. Yeah, did I drove I into it. the. I, I drove. It. I pulled up to the Chase Field garage. <laughs> there were no parking attendants. Yeah, it was weird. I had no way to get in. Uh, and then I realized that we just have a show today, and there's, there's no actual Diamondbacks baseball it. happening. It's a sad day, Derek. Yeah, it is a sad day, and it comes after <laughs> a sad loss that we would like to forget, but we're going to probably talk about some more, uh, and we are going to talk about it with our guest uh, and somebody who we're a big fan of. It's the one only Dalton Feely from John Boy. Dalton, what's happening, sir? Thank you so much for joining us. What's Skiing going on, to you. I am so <laughs> pumped to be here. Thank you, Derek, Jesse. Damn dog, baby. Let's go. <laughs> all pumped. Yeah, man. Thank you so much for joining us. Of course, it's uh, it's wonderful to have uh, another snake aficionado in the building. Uh, and, uh, you know, we know that you have been uh, promoting our, our fine Diamondbacks quite a bit over there, John Boy, along with that that guy that was wearing the the half jersey thing that he had going on there. <laughs> That was, that was nuts. nuts. We were texting before the uh, Jake and I were texting before that series, and I said, "You have to be like one of the moms who has the split jerseys because it's your snake, but it's also your too. So you got to pick." And he goes, "I'm splitting it halfway." Um, really funny. That's awesome, Dalton. I I feel like Diamondbacks fans. I mean, every baseball fan loves what you guys do at John Boy. I've been following for a long time. Appreciate it's that. it's it's Thank fantastic, you. fantastic stuff. Mm-hmm. But Diamondbacks fans are not used to getting much love from, you know, national shows, national media. It's not something that they're really familiar with. And yet you guys, it's not only you, obviously, Jake. uh, It seems like there's a lot of snakes people over at John Boy relative to like other national outlets. How did this start? Like, how did you become a Diamondbacks fan yourself? Where do we trace this back to? So when I was really young, like this is like the early 2000s, mid 2000s, I was a young kid, loved the purple and teal, loved the big unit, Randy Johnson. I was just enamored with the six foot 10, six foot 11 left-handed pitcher (laughs) throwing nearly a hundred miles per hour. And it was just electric stuff. Uh, Ironically, I'm from New York. My, my whole family's Yankee fans, so it's you would think I would be a Yankee fan. That would be the natural progression. Uh, that, that's not the case. Um, and I just became a Diamondbacks fan. And then like when I was early teens, uh, Wade Miley was my guy from MLB Draft, Southeast Louisiana University, and then Dimebacks Draft him, has that great rookie season in 2012, and then I was hooked the rest of the way. So I guess, I mean, I guess this uh, this past series between the the Diamondbacks and the Yankees, I mean, that must have been that must have been big around the office for you guys yeah. out there. Uh, I have to ask Dalton, what what part of yesterday's game from the Diamondbacks side, like like made you the most angry or just like broke your brain the most? There there was a lot of chaos happening on the, on the Diamondback <laughs> side yesterday. Yeah, usually we get the good chaos, you know, the small right, ball right, right, yeah, and confusion for the other team, but. Uh, I, I'm going to say that Jace Peterson pinch hitting for Blaze in, in the ninth inning was my biggest uh, issue. Blaze obviously had his first career home run earlier in that game. They hadn't had somebody get on base in, uh, since that walk Blaze had, which, by the way, was a very poised at bat. I think he was down 0 2, works in yeah. goal, gets the walk versus Rodon. Um, I think he earned that at bat. I understand he's been a, a platoon guy prior to the Perdomo injury. But I would have given him a shot in that situation. Yeah. And no one's predicting the Perdomo injury. You can't predict injuries. That stunk. Um, but I think you let Blaze hit there, and the domino effect wouldn't have happened at that point. This is this is no disrespect to Jace, but I feel like I, I agree with you, and I feel like Blaze has done more to prove 
that he earned it, at least in that moment, at least right now in this period of time with the way he has been playing since you know spring training started, his entire performance during spring, and even the way he's played so far this season, is it, it just it felt very much like he at least deserved that that spot more than what you had as as an option, right? And again, that is it's no slight to Jace. It just felt like you know why why not just give Blaze a shot in that in that situation? Oh, a hundred percent. I mean, the guy had what the second highest average in spring training of all major leaguers at that point. Uh, he played. Yeah. He's been electric. He's been blazing so far since spring training. Let, yeah. let the kid get a shot. I mean, I personally was fully expecting Scott McGuff to come through in that in that situation. <laughs> and to be fair, that pitch was outside. Yeah, we no. touched on yeah. this on our post game show yesterday. Scott McGuff clearly has one, you know, one of the one of the better eyes on this team uh, from a hitting standpoint. <laughs> he wasn't wrong. He knew he knew that right, was outside. Uh, home plate umpire was a bit of a bit of a rough day for him. I did want to see him walk off the Yankees. That would have been that would have been That's, one of the greatest stories yeah. ever. <laughs> the foul ball he hit. He slaps one down the yeah. right field side, and I'm like, oh my gosh, this could be like a, a double to win it. You we know? got a, We got a dog at the plate. We got a dog Crime at the dog. plate. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Uh, I will say um, it was a great. I mean, it was a sloppy series to begin with, but I, I think the bright side out of it, out of it, though we only won one of three, was that the Yankees are supposed to be one of the best teams in baseball this year, and we're this up and coming team still, even though we made the World Series last year. Right. And we were competitive, not playing our best ball. So I think yeah. that's a bright side to take something yeah. from that. Yeah. And, and the Yankees were red hot coming in. Like we kind of yeah. said, obviously the yeah. Diamondbacks were too to an extent. But the Diamondbacks didn't come off of just sweeping the Astros. The Diamondbacks came off of taking three out of four from the Rockies. And again, no disrespect to the Rockies, just like none to Jace Peterson, but they're definitely not the Astros. And so for I felt like for the Diamondbacks to kind of come in, uh, you know, not have that great of a game, but still be in the first game of the series and then smoke them like they did in game two. Like it was a very encouraging sign. The results aren't great it, when everything is said and done, but I still feel like what you said there, like they gave, they gave it a good, uh, they gave it a good fight. They gave it a good effort, even though a lot of mistakes kind of piled up on them, especially in, in the finale. Yeah. yeah. Um, it was funny watching that game. I was in enemy territory. I was surrounded by Yankee fans. So <laughs> usually it's not the case when I'm watching a snakes fans. I have their allies in the office, uh, you know, getting some text, but during the series, I was not a friend of anyone, apparently, and they made that very clear. <laughs> well, speaking of that Rocky series, the finale of that one had something special happen where you missed the game, uh, game the, the, the game they lost, uh, and then right. you made up for it by sending this tweet out. Damon, if we could get that tweet up. Uh, uh, he said, he takes full, <laughs> I take full blame for last night's loss. In return, <laughs> I'm watching in a full today, uh, and the D-backs will win 5-1 to one this afternoon. Dalton, the Diamondbacks did win – five to one that afternoon. So I guess my question for you is how am I going to die? Because I need <laughs> to know I've been trying every time I start, come across somebody that's psychic or, uh, you know, that, 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 uh, can tell the future. I try to get this information out of them. Uh, were, were you even surprised by your ability to <laughs> predict that outcome of that game there a little bit? Oh yeah. That, I'm just, I can't believe that actually happened. Um, <laughs> I, I, the win, I wasn't really like, I knew they were going to win that game. I thought, like, if we took two of four in that series, that's not good. And that's a it whole is kind of a disaster. Time. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I thought we were going to win. 5 1 was kind of just, you know, let's throw a dart at the dartboard. And ironically, it hit. I guess I've been taking lessons from Trev Ploof when he made that World Series prediction a couple of years ago, right on the money. I guess that was rubbing off on me a little bit. And uh, it was a great score prediction, I guess. I mean, I naturally I'm tempted to ask you, like, how many games will the Diamondbacks win? Will they win the World Series? Because yes. surely, know that? surely, you, know you, that? surely yeah. you have answers right. to all these questions. <laughs> but on a on a more on a more serious note, uh, it was a pretty big off season for the D-backs, right? I mean, especially mm -hmm. at the end, getting getting Jordan Montgomery on top of all the other additions that they made, and I think that's a big reason why fans are really optimistic right now, even with the series loss to the Yankees, is that. Tommy Henry and Ryan Nelson aren't going to be in this rotation for very long. Theoretically, you've got Montgomery, you've got Erod, uh, you know, yeah. theoretically just uh, just a few weeks away. So, uh, what what were your thoughts about this team's off season coming in, and what was going through your head just like a little over a week ago when the Diamondbacks sort of shocked the world by signing Jordan Montgomery, you know, two days before the season started? I'll start with Monty because that's like the most recent news. I cannot believe he got $25 million guaranteed, and that's it. Like, yeah. I was guessing he would make nine, fig uh, nine figures over $100 million. Um, 
I'm shocked that another team that especially a playoff caliber team didn't make that offer because Monty is a pretty durable guy. He's been getting better and better. So it's awesome to have somebody of Monty's caliber join that rotation and a rotation that's got Gallon, got Merrill Kelly, Brandon Fought up and coming, Erod who, who's hurt obviously right now, but has high expectations. His ERA has dropped over the last three seasons. Um, I would the only downside I would say is that we don't have him right away. So we have Tommy Henry yeah. still. We still have Ryan Nelson. But when Monty gets his, that workload back up, it's going to be very exciting to watch him pitch because I think that's a huge boost for the rotation. It's wild to me that we were kind of satisfied with what the Diamondbacks had as far as acquiring Erod and the rotation with Ryan Nelson or Tommy Henry in it. But now after both of those guys have started and and really struggled in those starts, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it, it almost makes us feel like the Diamondbacks kind of might have known this and that might have been the reason for that push for Montgomery despite the fact that we thought they would not spend that kind of money even for one year that, that this late in the offseason. I guess it wasn't even the offseason. It was basically <laughs> it was right basically before the opening day. <laughs> right. Yeah, I. it's shocking because we've got a couple surprises in Dimeback for agency, like the Zach Granke signing. When that, when that happened, the six for 206, I was – I remember where I was. I was in standing in this room. I got the alert, and I'm like, oh, my gosh. Dimeback's made a big – like a big, big move. The yeah. Mad Bum move, which obviously didn't have the same working effect as the Granky move. But so we've seen some moves in Dimeback free agency history. That's like, okay, they've made some moves. Uh, Randy too, but that was before uh, my time as an as in, in-depth Dimebacks fan. But get, getting, making moves, like, you know, even Guriel, getting Guriel back, Jock Peterson, Guricek, uh, Guricek, who I haven't yeah. seen yet since he's been hurt. Um, it's been a fantastic offseason in terms of the moves we got, and I'm super excited to see everyone all together once everyone's back. Yeah. Health, Monty healthy. It's going to be huge. It feels like there is a little concern now, though, about getting to that point of when those guys get back. I mean, we were kind of looking at the math on it, and it seems like Nelson and Tommy Henry both have about three more starts, maybe more than that, left in the rotation. Any mm. concerns for from you there in regards to making it, I guess, to that finish line where we do have all of those guys in the starting rotation? Uh, a little bit more, I guess, more concern, as you said, now than I did going into the season. Right, right. Um, I'll start with Tommy Henry because I had more hope going into the year for Tommy Henry than Ryan Nelson. The one thing that gives me hope for Tommy Henry is like last season, he ranked in the 89th percentile in hard hit percentage. So yeah. he's inducing yeah. softer contact, which is great, when, especially when you have a great defense behind you too, who you can trust to make plays. The only thing I always worry about Tommy Henry, he's not an electric pitcher. Like he doesn't register as nearly as many strikeouts. Uh, early in his career, he's never had a season where he's had seven, uh, a seven, over a 7K per nine season. And that's a little worrisome, like a guy who can strike out some batters, get get those whiffs. Um, hopefully, Tommy Henry, if you can give five innings, two runs, and pass it off to now a strengthened bullpen, especially when Seawalt comes back, uh, that would be yeah. huge. Um, I, I do have a question about you uh, for you guys for Tommy Henry. Should he use the four seam less and maybe turn into a sinker pitcher? Because I feel like that four seam, every time I see him throw that fastball, it get that's the pitch that gets hard, not that curveball, not the changeup. That's that's fascinating that you asked that because I actually asked that to Tommy Henry after one of his uh, his spring training <laughs> outings, uh, just like maybe okay. two weeks ago or something. So we're we're on the, we're on the same wavelength mm -hmm. here. Uh, he okay. he didn't really seem it didn't seem like that was something that he had really given much consideration to. The sinker is kind of a a, a new experiment, sort of a thing, uh, something that he's using to really dust left-handed hitters off the plate is what it sounds like. He's trying to use it in inside to, to lefties. It doesn't sound like he really plans on using it a whole lot outside of that. But yeah, the same thought went through my head because uh, Henry definitely doesn't have, you know, one of those electric four seam fastballs. And a lot of times guys in that situation start throwing a sinker and, you know, suddenly they're, they're at least dialing up some ground balls. So you're getting a little bit more, a little bit more movement on the pitch horizontally. Right. So yeah, I, I mean, maybe you and I should be that. I mean, Brent Strom, like he's pretty good, but I think, I think you and I would, would maybe be better at that Dalton. But uh, <laughs> yeah, apparently, apparently Apparently it's not, it's not, at least for right now, I don't think that's something that's in the works. Okay. Dalton, we got to ask this. We need to know. We see all the beautiful uh, stuff behind you there. Uh, who's your favorite Diamondback? I mean, this year, yeah, obviously you, you talked about your history of, of loving this team, but uh, particularly this year, who, who are you really just behind as a fan? 
Ooh, okay. Um, going on current, current. Like I like Blaze, especially he's young. I like seeing Blaze the prospect. Is great. Of, uh, yeah, so yeah. that's awesome. Um, he just got hurt in front of the IL. Alec Thomas for me. Yeah, and it's kind of a funny reason why he's Corbin Carroll light, which you know very similar <laughs> swing, play very similarly. Obviously, Corbin's more of the superstar. Um, when I, <laughs> this is gonna be such a silly story. Uh, as a high school baseball player, I think I resemble. If I had to choose someone I played like, it would be Alec Thomas. Mm -hmm. uh great i would consider myself a great high school baseball defender had speed um the power uh, i don't know about that but (laughs) but the qualities that alec thomas brings to the diamondbacks uh was is something that i like oh that's something i would love to bring if i was an mlb baseball player so that he's a guy to me that's like really easy to root for and obviously him as a person the energy that he brings is is very um electric but it's um contagious is the word yeah yeah uh it's funny it's funny you bring that up because one of the reasons why i'm a huge fan of christian walker is for years i made a create a character in mlb the show that kind of looked a lot like christian walker uh (laughs) and so then eventually i was like i just got the real thing in real life i guess so uh yeah i'm with you on that he's mashes and it just like my guy that i played with in the game he mashed but uh obviously last year uh was an incredible year storybook uh, season a little bit for this Diamondbacks team. Uh, can you take us through your recollection of last year's playoff run, at least for you? Uh, could you actually believe what what you were seeing uh, when when these when this team was advancing past you know the first round, past the Dodgers, and into the the World Series eventually? Yeah, I I'll start with this uh, early going into the season. I think the over under was like seventy three and a half wins, and I thought this is an easy over. Like I. Did I think they were a playoff team? No, I'll be I'll be blatantly honest. I did not think the Snakes were going to make the playoffs last year. I thought they would be better than seventy three wins. I think I had guessed yeah. like seventy eight to eighty wins, but not a playoff team. They Jake, I, I just have to I have to stop you there, Dalton, because we had Jake on right before the start of last season, and he took I guess he took the under. He took the under. He, he told us that the Diamondbacks, after winning seventy four games in twenty two, he had the D backs winning seventy three games last year. So. I guess I, I think Dalton is the new. I mean, he's the new favorite around. Yeah, here no, for the, sure, I mean, so. we, we got to get him an invite to the pool party. He's got to come out here and lifeguard <laughs> now. I'll protect the pool. There I'll we get go. the tank. Let's go. I um the one thing I'll say with that too is that me and Jake had an argument about earlier in the season last year. He had the Giants over the the Diamondbacks, and I'm like, Jake, the Giants are just blah. Like they have every guy that they had was like a six hitter or it's not like a, a rotate uh, a thumper in that lineup but anyway off of the that nl west fight between jake and i um, <laughs> so when we matched up against the brewers i was like i was pretty positive about that uh the bullpen was one of the best in baseball since september at that point uh the bats were starting to go i had faith in the top of the rotation and they line up with the brewers they sweep the Brewers, and then you face the 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 monsters in LA, the Dodgers, and I was yeah. worried. The bright side was, and this is a little toxic. We're playing the Dodgers, and I just know postseason success is something that has eluded them in non-COVID years. So I'm like, okay, maybe there's a shot. There's a Cinderella story that could happen. <laughs> um, we were doing baseball, uh, streaming the games on uh, JM Baseball, John Boy Baseball on YouTube, and. The Lance Lynn game was maybe the, one of the greatest baseball moments of my life so far. Not one, <laughs> not two, it was not special. Three, yeah. four home runs off of Lance Lynn. Yeah. I live with LeBron meme. Not one, not two. It was absolutely electric. I was going nuts. And NLCS beating the Phillies, come back 3-2, Philadelphia twice. It's a journey. Obviously, we didn't win the World Series, but the journey was one heck of a ride. It was awesome. You, you bring up that four home run game, and I think for me, it might be the same thing. I, uh, just to tell you my experience, I, I went down, I told Jesse, I'm going to go try to get some some pictures, like, just closer. You yeah, know? yeah, I'm you were in down. the press box, then you went down. I was in the press yeah. box, and the right. Perdomo, uh, it was Perdomo that started, Perdomo started off, started right? It, so yeah. it was the Perdomo home run right. happened while I was in, like, the elevator going down. So when I got off and walked out, you know, the crowd was kind of going crazy <laughs> and stuff. So I was like, damn, I missed it, right? So then at that point, I'm like, I just need to go get as close as possible right now and get myself a picture. And then the other three home runs happened. (laughs) I have at times when I've been on the pro wrestling podcast that I've done, have talked about how when Dwayne The Rock Johnson comes out and the crowd loses their mind, I could actually kind of feel the electricity they talk about in the air. 
that is the only other time I have felt it. Like the crowd wow. losing their mind, especially after, you know, the Moreno home run. It was like any, I haven't experienced anything like that in my life. It was the most electric atmosphere that I've ever been in at Chase Field. And like, it was just wild to look around at the crowd and have so many people have this overjoyed but bewildered look on their face like yes, what is both. happening right now like everybody was <laughs> looking at each other with their arms like this go what is going on and it was uh it was amazing it was very much my favorite moment i think i've ever been involved in myself yeah la- last thing for me dalton uh, we're about to unveil our our power rankings after the first week of of the season uh, which I mean, power rankings at this stage of the season, it almost it almost feels silly. But do you? I mean, do you have this Diamondbacks team? Like, are they are they top five for you? Or are they? I, I mean, I imagine maybe they're somewhere in the top ten. Like, where where do you think they rank roughly here as the as the season gets underway? If we're going like health for health, roster constructed as is through one week of play, they're definitely not in my top five. Um, I would put them closer to nine or ten. I think as okay. the season progresses, my thought would be Monty and Eva being back, Seawald being back. Um, we're in the top five. I think this is truly a potential, like shockingly, 92 win, if not more, team if everything goes right. Um, but for the time being, I think, you know, like the Tigers have played out of their mind right now, still undefeated. Pirates have looked really good. Yankees, as we mentioned earlier, Dodgers are the Dodgers. I think there's a lot of teams early on that have looked. I guess better and healthier than us. But that said, I still have high expectations going into the year. I think that depth really paid off uh, pretty quickly for this team, considering that, you know, it was, it was a good problem to have at one point. And now here we are in this situation where they've already lost so many pieces so early in the season. Yeah. I guess that kind of leads me into my final question for you, which is, is there anything that worries you about the diamondbacks this year? Is there anything particular that you think, you know, might be, might be a roadblock for them this season? The NL West itself is going to be one heck of a dogfight. Yeah. Uh, I think Jake had mentioned it with you guys and it had told me after, like, there, there's four teams. There could be, you know, one team that misses out, even two teams that could potentially miss out in the playoffs, and it's going to be yeah. devastating for those teams. Uh, I think so. Our series versus the Padres, Dodgers, and Giants is something to watch for. And I'm not worried about this, but I would like to see Corbin get going a little bit. He's had a, mm. uh, a rough first week. The high fastball looks like it's been giving him a little bit of an issue so far. I think that will click, but I would just love to see him hit his first home run. And they're like, okay, we're back. We're good. He was rookie of the year for a reason last year, and everything will start to roll. He is Dalton Feely from John Boy. He is the head researcher for John Boy Media and Talking Baseball. Uh, And, of course, uh, more importantly, above all, a Snakes fan. So we thank you, sir, (laughs) for joining us. You can follow him at dfeely. 14 on Twitter. I think that's correct. Um, and of course, uh, make sure to continue rooting for the snakes, young man. We need you in that. We need you over there. John boy, holding it down for us. <laughs> I do want to say before I go, I really appreciate what you guys do as a, as a Dimebag fan on the East coast. It's really hard to follow, you know, to, to, to really follow and be in depth with the community. And you guys do such a great job with all the coverage that you put out. And I love following through with you guys because I feel like I'm a part of it. So thank you, thank you very much. We appreciate you. Thanks, thank you Dalton. so much for coming through, Dalton. We appreciate it. Appreciate it, guys. Thank you. Later, buddy. All right. Well, of course. I feel like that was a missed opportunity, Derek, because we did discover that the man can predict the future, and we didn't go nearly as far with that as we probably should have. Oh, yeah. No, I know. We, well, see, that's the thing is, Jesse, we're, we're kind of giving this show away for free right now on YouTube, mm. and that's like paywall stuff. You know yeah, that. Yeah, that's, that's fair. If you want, If you want the special, like supplementary segment where Correct. Dalton is willing to field your questions and tell, and you, tell, you, the tell you about the future yeah. that you will have to become a PHNX diehard. That's right. You want, that. that's yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> do you want uh, the lotto numbers? I still call it, that shows how old I am. I, I That's two times in a row I've called it the lotto. <laughs> you want the Powerball numbers? You want Arizona lottery numbers? Make sure to follow up and become a diehard. You'll get that uh, as free, or not free, but paid for supplemental content. Uh, of course, really do become a diehard, by the way. We do offer you all sorts of wonderful uh, additions content that you don't get on this show including uh articles from jesse uh show is from us we do whole shows including a game show we did do not miss out on all of that wonderful stuff make sure to sign up today get a free t-shirt from phnxlocker.com and so much more uh and of course 
this entire show is brought to you by our friends at Factor Meal. Factor uh, has literally been saving the lives of me and Jesse Friedman. I don't know about the rest of you. You guys might know how to feed yourselves. You might know how to eat or when to eat. We don't. Uh, we actually do a very bad job of taking care of ourselves. And yes. luckily, uh, Factor Meals have been clutch. I have a, like my little catchphrase uh, that I say. My wife li- says I, I say it every time I take the first bite, which is, oh, my God, this is amazing. It, they're really good, Derek. Like it's, it's, I'm being a hundred percent honest. They're really good. I know. It's, well, yeah, <laughs> the, I know we're doing an ad between, read. Like, like this is these are incredible. The folks. gap between what I would make at home and the factor meals I eat. Yeah, yeah. it it's a significant. Right. It's a significant. I, I eat I, I eat like a hamburger and French fries, or you know, <laughs> chips and and a sandwich almost every day for lunch. The, the, uh, only, the, only, the only vegetables I eat are are oh, the factor meals that I yeah, eat pretty absolutely. much. <laughs> I'm not going to make myself vegetables. Like I'm not going to yeah, choose no, to who, do that. Who does that? But again, right? I, I've said this in the past. Factor has these amazing sauces with every single meal. And again, they also like put the meals together for you. Like I would not choose to get a creamy tomato pork chop. That didn't really sound sure, super appealing sure. to me. Yet when I ate it, it was incredible. Yeah. It was incredible. The protein so it's like, is always on point. Right. Yeah. I like it's like if I were to choose myself, I would probably just choose a bunch of the same things. And the fact that they have, you know, like their chef curated um, meal, you just pick chef's choice and then they pick out the meals for you and send them to you. It's great. Yeah. Um, and there's more than 60 add ons. So it's not just meals there. They have smoothies, which are incredible to take with you on the go. Uh, I right now I'm, I'm getting their little nutrition shots, which Jesse is like, I'm not drinking that. I'm not doing that. That's but a little too th- healthy. They are me. they are delicious. <laughs> and let me tell you, I feel better than ever. So uh, it only takes two minutes to heat them up. I think our biggest problem is, has been finding a refrigerator at times to keep them in, to be honest, because they're not frozen. They're always fresh. And of course, that's what I say. I think sets them apart, right? So yeah. uh, make sure to sign up and save. We've done the math. Factor is less expensive than takeout, and every meal is dietitian approved to be nutritious and delicious. So head to factormeals.com slash phnxdbax50 and use code phnxdbax50 to get 50% off. That's code phnxdbax50 at factormeals.com slash phnxdbax50 to get 50% off. Also, enjoy some some uh, enjoy baseball with our friends at BetMGM. They make baseball more fun. You got a little skin in the game. Uh, like I said yesterday, you had Shane actively rooting for Josh Rojas pitching for the Mariners just so that uh, they would <laughs> they, they would hit the under for him, and they did. Uh, and that's the kind of joy you can have in your life with BetMGM Sportsbook. Right now, if you sign up and use our code of PHNX, you can deposit $10 into your newly created account. And if you bet that amount or more, you will get that amount back in a bonus bet should your uh, bet lose. You can get up to $1,500 back in bonus bets if the bet loses. If the bet does lose, your bonus bets will be available once your initial wage- wager is settled. So sign up right now for BetMGM and use that bonus code of PHNX. Place your first BetMGM Sportsbook wager through the mobile app for at least $10. You'll receive $1,500 back, uh, up to $1,500 back in bonus bets if the bet loses. Check out the show notes for full details. And now listen to Shane talk about the disclaimer. Bonus bets expire in seven days. One new customer offer only. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Available in the U.S. Call 877-8-HOPE-NY-467-369-NEW-YORK. 467 new york Call 1-800-327-5050, Massachusetts. 21 plus only. Please gamble responsibly. Call 1-800-NEXT-STEP, Arizona. 1-800-BETS-OFF, Iowa. 1-800-981-0023, Puerto Rico. First bet offer for new customers only. Subject to eligibility requirements. Bonus bets are non-withdrawable. In partnership with Kansas Crossing Casino and Hotel. See BetMGM.com for terms. U.S. promotional offers not available in New York, Nevada, North Carolina, Ontario, or Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. Well, Jesse, we are done with week one. Some up, some downs, uh, but I know we have some takeaways. From this first week, I know one of your first things has been uh, the Diamondbacks having some pretty solid at bat quality. Yeah, yeah. We're just gonna run through five things uh, real quick. Sometimes I would put this in an article format that wasn't possible yesterday, so I figured I'd bring them on the show. We'll Let's do, do it, it this way instead. Uh, so yeah, my first takeaway from the Diamondbacks first week is that the quality of their at bats, on the whole, obviously there have been lapses here and there, right? I mean, you could argue during during moments of that Yankees game yesterday, maybe not the best, but on the whole, quality of their at bats has been really good. And uh, I have some nice nerdy stats to, to help to help back this up. Do so I have my, wear my glasses? Let's put on my glasses. Yeah, you need your you need your uh, Gabe Kaplan glasses <laughs> for this. Uh, the Diamondbacks through their first seven games have the lowest whiff rate in all of baseball at nineteen point two percent. Let's go. For those who are not familiar, that means that a whiff rate is the percentage of swings that result in a miss. So only nineteen percent of the time, uh, the Diamondbacks hitters have swung. Have they missed? 
And the next lowest in baseball is the Guardians at 21.6%. So they're more than 2% lower uh, than the next lowest team, which, of course, the lower the number, the better in this situation. That's what um, happens when Geraldo Perdomo is on your team. Geraldo, I, I I will give Geraldo Perdomo his Got flowers in this regard. <laughs> uh, although Geraldo Perdomo did swing and miss yesterday. A couple of times. Twice a couple of times, one at bat. Twice in oh. one at bat. And those, those, was were, sick. those were his <laughs> first two whiffs of the entire season. Can I give the uh, percentage had, rate? Can I give the you percentage can, rate? You can. You can. Yes. His 4. whiff rate. 4.8%. 4.8% 4. 4. 4. whiff rate. Yeah. That's incredible. Yeah. That's I mean, wild. considering that the next closest guy on the team is Corbin at 14%. Yeah. 14% is also really good. Yeah. League, a league average whiff rate uh, so far this season, the league average is 26.4%. So the D-backs as a team, about seven percentage points below that. Um, and by, another, the way, by the way, Jesse... Jesse got really excited to show me this yesterday. I, I think did. It, it meant more to him than it did to me, yeah, for sure. But yeah. uh, the whiff rate, a lot of these league averages, they do not change very much from year to year. It's so beautiful. It's like one percent, half amazing. a percent. Like it's it's a fairly mm-hmm. it's a fairly standard percentage across Major League Baseball, which is why if if you know over the course of a hundred and sixty two game season, your average whiff rate can be substantially lower than that league average. I mean, it just shows how yeah. good you are at the dish. Yeah, twenty six point four is is the league average. The D backs being at nineteen point two is is very very good. Uh, another guy that really stands out to me so far is obviously it's so early to really be reading a ton into these numbers. Sure. Uh, but Gino Suarez has a whiff rate of eighteen point four percent so far this season, which yeah. is well below the league average. And for those not familiar, Gino Suarez has some history with swing and miss. He struck he led the league in strikeouts last year. Yeah, um, and or at least the American League and. Um, and yeah, I mean, th- this would be a big development for him if I, I don't think he's going to keep his whiff rate this low the entire season. Right, but if right. he could just cut down on the swing and miss at least a little bit this year and not have it be an um, pretty much a, a weakness for him like it has been in the yeah. past. Yeah, because his his weakness in the past, the reason he strikes out so much isn't really that he chases out of the zone a ton. Which we're going to get to that in a, in a second. His weakness has just been that when he swings, he just misses a yeah. lot because yeah. he, his his plate coverage is just not particularly good. But it's been a lot better so far this year. He's also been a lot better at, at spreading his hits around. And we've seen him spray a lot more singles than we expected him to see. Yeah, it felt like he was kind yeah. of a feast or famine guy. But so far, what we've seen out of him as a diamondback has been him kind of taking what's been given to him, which we know that that's approach that most of the hitters on this team tend to have. We've talked about Gabby really succeeding with that approach, but it, it really does feel like that's kind of what uh, what what we've seen out of him early on, which is it was very good for this team that kind of needs more guys that can kind of, you know, do what they've done in some of these early games, which is just keep that carousel going. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, we'll see if it's sustainable. I mean, I don't think 18.4% is sustainable, but even if this is just a sign that Suarez has made you know, uh, minimal improvements in that regard. That would be big news. Um, My other uh, nerdy stat on this real quick is the D-backs have the third lowest chase rate in baseball so far uh, at 24.2%. League average is 28.1. And that's just exactly what it sounds like. What percentage of pitches outside the zone are you swinging at? Uh, The Diamondbacks, uh, as I said, 24.2%, the third lowest mark in the league. Uh, Last year, they were also pretty good at at this. Uh, They ranked uh, eighth lowest last season. So, um you know they were they were a pretty good team last year in terms of swing decisions as well, but they've been even better so far this year. And uh, I'm sure Damon, of course, will love to hear that Geraldo Perdomo is also uh, right at the right at the top <laughs> of the list for the D-backs in this one. His chase rate is just 16.7 percent. Uh, he has seen 48 pitches out of the strike zone so far, and he has only swung at eight of them. It's pretty good. It's really good. It's really good. I, I mean, mean, the yeah. patience is a big key, especially for the younger guys right now, because. That's who we're seeing have patience, right? Corbin, Perdomo, you know, you you have in here yeah. Blaze with his 18.8% whiff rate, right? Like m- most likely not sustainable as, as the season progresses, but showing that early patience when instead you're typically a little amped to be out there at the start of the season. Yeah. Someone like true. Blaze, you're you're very excited to kind of show what you're you're able to do. He's he's sticking to what, you know, basically got him here, which is, you know, some from some very consistent at bats. Were you gonna were you gonna say something, Damon? Do you have some I was just gonna say flowers that, to give? That like <laughs> as much as I love the guy, if he didn't do that, if that wasn't stuff that he was doing, he yeah. would be like objectively bad. 
this is like that's kind big of, of you where, to admit, Damon. That's kind I of where his value lies. I, feel like, I feel like that's the maturity for Damon <laughs> right there. It's pretty impressive. I mean, I've all, I'm always an honest guy. I just like that is where his value lies. Is that he's like he's a nine hole hitter who sets the the table for your big dogs, and then he yeah. gets on base and sees a ton of pitches. He's also just that that's something he takes some great at bats. Even, when, even when he yeah, does he not really get on base, he still takes some great at bats, which is one one of the frustrating things that we saw, especially in yesterday's loss. A lot of a lot of first pitch swings for contact that were pop ups and you know things like that that you you just especially against Carlos Rodon you wanted to see them you know take a few more pitches try to extend that you know his outing try to get him out of there as much as possible but the Diamondbacks have been very good at, at not striking out and walking because they yeah. have uh, the third lowest strikeout rate in MLB and the seventh highest walk rate uh, their strikeout rate is seventeen percent uh, walk rate ten and a half percent both very good. Both yeah. very good. I mean, even their team slash line, 290, 370, 473 with an 843 <laughs> OPS. Let's go, Jesse. I'm going to guess that one's not sustainable. But Shut up. Yeah, it's I mean, if, totally if, if, a team, if a team could hit 290 with, a, with an 843 <laughs> OPS for As an entire season, yeah, you'd, you'd, do some, you'd do some real damage there. Uh, yeah, the offense, I think, has been really everything you could hope for up to this point in the season with the exception of probably Corbin Carroll and we'll we'll get into him a little bit more in a second. Uh, I do want to talk about Blaze Alexander. My second takeaway is the Blaze is doing the thing. He's come up, he's been everything that you would have hoped him to be. Blaze is blazing. Blaze is blazing uh, as Dalton said. Uh, he's 5 for 12 to start his big league career. Obviously a very very small sample size, but he did hit his first big league home run yesterday. Um, and I think I said yesterday I thought all of his at bats were against lefties, but I went back and looked and he actually has had 3 against righties he's gone two for three against righties he's gone three for nine against lefties with that home run that we saw yesterday so um and one silent treatment and one silent treatment yeah that was pretty funny that's he like went through the dugout trying to get high fives from everyone and then uh yeah he told me after the game that it took him a second but he did eventually realize what was was (laughs) (laughs) you know you know why because blaze's personality which everybody has talked about is like He's just so excited. He's so amped. And it's something that I never want to see change in him. But like, yeah. I can only imagine how excited he was to get back to the dugout and celebrate with his teammates only to have them do that to him. It's so great. <laughs> it's so great that they did. Jody Jackson had an incredible video yeah, of that on, yeah, yeah. on Twitter. Make sure to check that X. out for sure. Uh, yeah. Did you just, you're not allowed, don't call it X. I, I don't want to hear you call it X on here ever again. Right, but um, you, you did bring up Corbin Carroll. Uh, struggling and you know I, th- yeah. I still feel like even with the mistakes he made yesterday yesterday was definitely a step in the right direction for him but it was still grounding choppers it was still wasn't great it, it still wasn't great I mean the double was great the, the stolen base opportunity was not and uh, no so far yeesh, not great yeah I touched on this a little bit yesterday I have the, the more exact numbers in front of me now so he's had 21 batted balls so far this season Five of them are pop-ups. That's what we've seen a lot of in recent days. So all of those launch angles of, of around 50 degrees or higher. So, I mean, those are those are always going to you know find the gloves of infielders. Uh, he's hit three line drives. Only one of those was 95 miles an hour or higher off the bat. I think he's maybe gotten one hit off of those. I believe all three of those liners came in the Rocky series. Oof. And then 13 ground balls. And out of those, thir- like, ground balls can go for hits. Ground balls, you know, you can get a ground ball down the line, wind up at third base. Those things happen. But as I touched on a little bit yesterday, a lot of these ground balls have been choppers that, you know, maybe can be tricky plays for defenders sometimes. Like, you know, sometimes you can find your way on base that way. But generally speaking, it's not a, it's not a good sign from, you know, a batted ball quality perspective if you're hitting the ball like straight into the ground that means that you're you know you're well over the top so 10 of his 13 ground balls have had launch angles of minus five degrees or below um, and a lot of them are you know minus 40 minus 50 minus 60 degrees balls that are just going straight down off the bat so yeah it's it's been rough uh, as Dalton mentioned we've, we've really seen teams attack him with high end and heaters and he hasn't done a great job of laying off those pitches we, we saw that particularly in that Yankee series so there are adjustments to be made, and uh, it's seven games. No one's, no one's all that concerned at this point. Uh, but am, something maybe a Derek's little a little concerned, but uh, something to monitor moving forward for sure. A- average exit velo right now is eighty-one point seven miles per hour off the bat. And yeah, that's that's he pretty has, low. He's only had four batted balls of ninety-five plus out of the twenty-one. 
I, I know I, I know they don't get a lot of barrels per you know per season, right? I know the barrel percentage is typically pretty low, but he is zero. And I think that yeah. when you talk about the launch angles and everything that's going on with him, that's that's a lot of it is not getting the barrel on the ball. Yeah. Yeah, it's been rough. He's a pretty big part of this Diamondbacks team. Uh, soft- <laughs> and yet they still look pretty good without him. And I think that's the thing about this team having so much depth is, you know, uh, again, Lourdes goes 0 for 13 in this series against the Yankees, and they still almost won two out of three, right? Did he go 0 for 13? He went 0 for 13 that. with a walk. Yeah. Wow. Lourdes, especially yeah. after being the National League Player of the Week, absolutely disappeared in this series against the Yankees. Well, we do talk a lot about Lourdes being the, the streakiest hitter on that team. On this <laughs> I brought team, that so up. That, I, brought, uh, I brought you up saying that, right? That, we talk that about tracks, it a lot. That That's how everything averages out. It's like he'll go insane for a week, and then he'll have a week like this, right? But uh, again, the Diamondbacks are able still um, to, to, you know, to, to still get production somewhere else right now. And that's the thing about this team, like Gino, uh, you know, Cattell obviously is continuing to just be Cattell, but I mean, it feels like even when Corbin is struggling that they're, they're, they're able to get it. And that could be the calling card of the team this season that they kind of have somebody different doing it every single night. It was a bit of their identity last year too. And, and even yeah. in the playoffs, right. But two guys, that were absolutely incredible, have been and continue to be, are Zach Gallon and Merrill Kelly. Yeah, they've they've been outstanding to start the year. I think it's I don't have that in front of me. I think it's twenty four and two thirds innings and four earned runs between those two guys. It's a yeah. pretty pretty good way yeah. to to start off the year. And and uh, we did talk before Gallon's start on Tuesday about some concerning signs with his fastball and it not having the velocity and the life that it used to have. We didn't see the velocity jump up a ton in his start against the Yankees, but it did go from 91.8 to 92.2, which was a, a pod, obviously a move in the right direction. Um, and in my mind, more importantly, we saw his induced vertical break. It's basically <laughs> a fancy way of saying the the upward ride on his fastball, which is something uh, that, that has been that's been a big part of why Gallon's been so good. Is his fastball is so much life, yeah. and after being at 16.6 inches of induced vertical break in his first start. That was back up to 17.7 in his start against the Yankees. So that was a very, very big improvement and signs for me that Gallon is, you know, maybe maybe he gets all the velocity back, maybe he doesn't, but as long as his fastball has that kind of life on it, I think the pitch can still be pretty effective. Meanwhile, Steve Gilbert still doesn't care about vertical. No, no, he doesn't. He doesn't. Yeah, I took a lot of flack in the (laughs) in the the press box for all my induced vertical break comments. And he'll continue. He'll continue. And I will continue to uh, probably fair criticisms. But yeah, Gallon, you know, certainly a step in the right direction. And then Merrill Kelly just doing Merrill things. Uh, He's looked great in in both of his outings. I know he made the mistake to Aaron Judge yesterday, but. Uh, it's hard to argue with with what he's done so far, and feeling, feel, feeling good about that. I uh, feel that pretty good. Prediction? I my bold prediction on this show <laughs> a little over a week ago was that Merrill Kelly would finish higher than Gallon in uh, in Cy Young voting, and the Merrill Kelly Cy Young campaign is off to a pretty good start, Derek. That's not all feeling, I'm saying. Not feeling very good about any of my bold predictions for sure, but uh, of course. <laughs> Uh, that I mean, brings... Blaze Alexander becoming a oh, yeah. oh, household name. A household that, was, name. that was one Come of them. Come on, right? that, that, that one was electric, right? That one I nailed him. You could right? argue he's already, he he's already, already there. Is. Yeah, right? he are... Well, it, he is the talk of, of like, at least the Diamondbacks world, right? Like, you got Dalton talking about him. You got Dalton everybody. mentioned Blaze before he mentioned before anyone he mentioned else. anybody else. I mean, <laughs> it, I, think, I think one thing we've, we've grown used to with this team is getting excited about these young guys when they come up because in baseball, typically it is kind of a bit of a fluke, right? And especially with this team, they've had some guys come up and be very good, both on the pitching end and at a position player end where they can fizzle out, right? Like they get here, they're hot for a minute. It's happened with guys that have experience like Emmanuel Rivera. It's happened with new guys like Jake McCarthy, right? Where they come up and you're just so excited about them and how good they are for, for a period of time. And then they come back down to earth because that's how baseball what do, it does to us, it beats us down, it drags us down. That's what baseball does to us. But uh, yeah, it's it's exciting to see someone come up and, and be able to sustain that level of of performance, sustain that level of excitement that we're all seeing in in Blaze. Uh, and we are very thankful for his presence because that brings us to our final takeaway from this week, and that is that the Perdomo injury really could put this team in a tough spot. This team has experienced quite a few injuries already this young season, uh, and luckily. 
nothing seems too drastic or nobody's being lost, you know, for extended period of time. But there's still some question marks as to when we're going to get Paul Seawald back and when Eduardo Rodriguez is going to be healthy and ready to go again. Right. So uh, not to mention the Alec Thomas injury, not to mention a few other key pieces that the Diamondbacks are missing right now. So uh, luckily, Blaze does make it a little easier if we do lose Perdomo, but yeah, not it doesn't make it any easier on Damon. And it doesn't make it any easier on the vibes because <laughs> Perdomo is the one that gets all night. he gets them all started, you know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, from what we heard yesterday, uh, Tori Tori called Perdomo day to day for now. Uh, he said that he would give a a you know more of an update once the team gets to Atlanta tomorrow. So we'll certainly be keeping an eye on that. I don't think it's inevitable by any means that Perdomo is going to hit the injured list. But just thinking for a moment, if he did hit the injured list, the D backs would be in a bit of a bind. Because you can have Blaze step in and become basically the everyday shortstop. I think a lot of people would be excited to see that. That would be, you know, I'd certainly be curious to see what he would look like in an everyday role. But from a depth standpoint, it would put them in a tricky position. Uh, If you look right now in Reno, the Diamondbacks don't really have a whole lot of options in the shortstop area. Jordan Lawler, of course, is hurt. He tore a ligament in his thumb and is going to be out for a couple of months. So yeah, he would not be sucks. an option uh, to come up and serve as the primary shortstop, the backup shortstop, none of that. Uh, they did bring back Kevin Newman on a minor league deal. So he is down in Reno. That would be sort of my expectation that they would just reach down and and bring Kevin didn't, Newman didn't, to the majors. Didn't, didn't Newman opt out of his minor league? Yeah, deal Newman brought him back. Right, Newman opted out, and then uh, and then yeah, I I guess he re-signed on a minor league deal. He's he's you know been playing games down in Reno for the Aces. The tricky thing with bringing Newman up is that he is not on the forty man roster, and mm-hmm. the Diamondbacks would be forced to make another forty man roster move uh, in order to to get him on the team. Which would be tough. The D-backs are, <sighs> yeah. this, this is a more talented 40-man roster than they've had in a long time. Looking through some of the guys on that 40-man that are in the minors. I mean, I see some guy named Jordan Montgomery. Like, I mean, he's like a quad A prospect, right? Like, they could just DFA Montgomery. Is yeah, that the, I mean, is that the move? I don't, I don't, like, I don't know how likely we're going to see him in the majors this season. You yeah, know? I mean, yeah, that's for sure. I, yeah. Montgomery seems like a, you know, I mean, he, how, how old is leader. he, Derek? He's he's thirty one years old yeah, and in AAA. Like, be, all right, yeah. end of conversation. Yeah, what you do just we, have to DFA we, Montgomery. Cut, yeah, what do you cut bait on some kid like this, right? Yeah. <laughs> no, but it could. I mean. Uh, pitching pitching wise, like you're not going to DFA, you know, not going to move on from Mena or Saul Frank or Walston or Corbin Martin or I mean, Paven Smith would maybe be the would maybe be the guy at that point, which is something that uh, I, you know, whatever people in the chat are thinking, I, I, I think that's something the Diamondbacks themselves would very much like to avoid. They've called um, it a, a good problem to have in the past, but now it seems like it's becoming a bad problem for them and fall involving how many guys they have on the roster, how many bodies yeah. they need and and how you know the the level of health i guess you could say not to mention you know making that roster spot for jordan montgomery bringing you know the guys that are currently injured back when they return randall gritchick there's a lot of questions there to be answered but uh there could be trouble ahead for the arizona diamondbacks in atlanta uh we do know the chicago white Sox did beat them one game so i guess that's yeah encouraging if you want to take something away there but (laughs) let's take a look at the probables for this series because uh P-U. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. This isn't right, right? Is that right? Is that right? I mean, my biggest takeaway looking at this is that Max Freed sucks, man. <laughs> like, 40.5 uh, ERA. Yeah, have, have some respect for yourself. Yeah. Uh, no, Max Freed, did, he did have a pretty, oh, a pretty rough first outing. I think that was against the Phillies. Oh, but, geez. yeah, Tommy Henry against Spencer <laughs> Strider in Game 1. Brandon fought against Max Freed in Game oh, 2. No. Ryan Nelson against Chris Sale oh, in Game 3. No. The problem here, Derek, is that the Braves have had not one but two rainouts so far. And yeah. that's messed with their so, rotation. And so we get everybody. And we get, so we get sale more. What? Like, God damn it. What the hell? The Diamondbacks had been slated to get the three through five pitchers in the Braves rotation. Which would have been Chris Sale, uh, Charlie Morton. And, and then Reynaldo Lopez. Reynaldo Lopez, right? But because of these two rainouts, oh, the Diamondbacks cool. three through five starters are matched up against the Braves one through three starters. Oh. And yes, the Braves do have a pretty darn good starting rotation. Um, not to mention that the Diamondbacks have three more starts this season from Tom, Tommy Henry and Ryan Nelson. Most likely, we look ahead. Uh, unless Torrey does something to change the lineup, things are heading in the direction of that kid Jesse was talking about, Jordan Montgomery, making his debut for the Snakes on 
what would appear April 19th against the Giants or maybe yeah, April that's 20th. What he, that's what he said. He said he April said, 19th. Yeah, Jordan himself said April 19th. But when you look at the schedule right now, Merrill Kelly would pitch on April 19th. So unless Tory moves Merrill to essentially like the third spot in the starting rotation. Yeah, which they would might make have sense to maneuver a little because bit. Because Tory has discussed in the past wanting to go righty, lefty, righty. As far as the starting rotation goes, that would allow him to maybe bring Eduardo Rodriguez there at the end of things and then have, you know, I, I don't know who's uh, this. This rotation is going to be nuts when those guys are back. But unfortunately, it's going to be a while before we see that rotation all together. Um, and again, I, I, I don't know if if we should be concerned about Henry and Nelson at this point. I don't I don't want to go just completely based on their first starts of the year. But I am going to say that. Like from what we've seen so far, I'm very thankful the Diamondbacks made their move to uh, bolster their starting rotation because this seems like it might have been an ongoing issue throughout the season if these guys continue to struggle. Yeah, I, Tommy Henry just, I mean, he looked really sharp for a couple of innings and then he just kind of lost his way against the Rockies. Um, you know, I, I still think Henry can be can be decent, yeah. you know, especially against teams like that, you know, the lesser offenses in, in the league. Uh, Ryan Nelson, I mean, the, the Yankees are a tough, I mean, that that's a tough assignment for your first start of the season and Nelson obviously really struggled he threw a whole bunch of pitches he wasn't able to put guys away things we've seen time and time again I am very curious to see whether it's Montgomery who comes back first or Erod it sounds like it will be Montgomery but I guess that's not official I'm very curious to see which of Nelson or Henry the Diamondbacks replace uh, it, you know, certainly seemed like Nelson was trending as the the winner for that final rotation spot in spring training. Uh, they wound up having to put both of them on the roster. I, I don't know if now when Montgomery or, or Erod, whichever guy comes back first, I'm not sure it's a given that, you know, Ryan Nelson stays and Tommy Henry goes. Yeah. So we'll yeah. have to see how that plays out. Uh, Home Slice on uh, in the comments said this team are just completely different team against opponents bullpens. That's not that's. A fairly accurate thing like lately they have really yeah. struggled again they, they make the opponent's bullpen look much better i think at times uh than than they do and honestly that's probably a problem that you could say went back to last year because i remember that being an issue for them at times yeah where they was. really did make opposing teams bullpens just look outstanding so uh hopefully that's something that they can get over at least this year they've been doing very good offensively early so they've been able to build themselves up a bit of a lead and and hold it but uh, we'll we'll see. We do have our power rankings here to discuss, but before we do that, we want to let you guys know to check out Gila River Resorts and Casinos because no one does it better. Uh, they offer an authentic and immersive experience. And I've said this before. Uh, I've said this almost as many times as Damon has attempted to lead me out of the boys' trips uh, to Gila River Resorts and Casinos. Uh, forget <laughs> going on a vacation. I hate traveling. I was going to go to Philadelphia this weekend, Jesse. Really? The, the part I hated the most was the thought of traveling. I don't like traveling. And in fact, because of the expense, they were going to have me like fly into like New York and take a train to fill it. It sounded awful. It's it, Megaran again. The, of course, it's Megaran. He always gets <laughs> me into these things. But yes, it's uh, it's definitely one of those things that I like to take the vacation without all that traveling nonsense. And Gila River Resorts and Casinos is the place to do it. They offer an unprecedented level of entertainment. And their state of the art gaming gaming floor has it all with over 800 slot machines. 15 blackjack tables, and of course, Arizona's largest casino sports book. So head to Gila River Resorts and Casinos with or without Damon and let them show you what Next Level is all about. You do you at Gila River Resorts and Casinos. Visit play at Gila.com for more details. You got anything over there? No? No. You good? <laughs> you sad? You're sad still, huh? I'll, I'm gonna leave I'm gonna leave Damon alone because he's still in mourning over Eraldo Perdomo. Uh and he might just change the shot to get more of my knees in it. And I don't think anybody wants that. Uh of <laughs> we course already are seeing there's just so enough. much leg. It's a lot of leg. I'm not that tall to have that much leg in the shot. But uh of course I do want to thank Desert Financial Credit Union because they got me started on my home ownership journey and they can help you out as well. For more than 84 years, Desert Financial has been Arizona's largest, most trusted local credit union, and they are dedicated to creating exceptional services, uh, experiences by giving back to the community and providing financial services that make your life better. Desert Financial, uh, they have financial experts that you can trust, and that's something that you can't say about every uh, bank or institution that you uh, put your money with. So look to Desert Financial for checking and savings accounts, mortgages, loans, credit cards, investment options, and so much more. And when you open a free checking account online, you can get $200 in bonuses. Get started by visiting desertfinancial.com slash 200. 
It is time, Jesse Friedman, for us to reveal our very first power rankings of 2024. I, I don't think we even attempted to do like preseason power rankings because we felt that was silly and unfair, right? What's the point? We have no idea how any of this stuff is going to work out until actual baseball games are played. And now that's happened. And there are some surprises in these top 10. So Damon, if you would, can you reveal the top 10 players in major league or teams, I should say, in major league baseball right now? And I guess the biggest the biggest news here is where the Arizona Diamondbacks fall, of course. I that, have that's them. what everybody wants to know. We have them we have them at number seven uh to start to in our in our first go through here. Um That's fair. Yeah. Uh that's teams fair. in teams in front of them will run through real quick. Dodgers number one, Braves number two, Orioles number three, Rangers four, Yankees five, Astros six, and then it's the Diamondbacks at seven, Phillies eight, Rays nine, and the Cleveland Guardians. Lead baseball and run differential, Derek. After one week, they are plus twenty eight and have gone five and two. We've got them at number ten. Those central teams in both the NL and AL are going crazy, but of course, the yeah. central the central division teams, Derek. They heard the haters, yeah, especially and, the and Pirates, they, which and, you completely left off this list. Yeah, I mean, and the Pirates last year, if people remember, the Pirates were like, weren't they like twenty and they were, eight or they something were ridiculous yeah, they were to start to start last season? Yeah. I guess there's something about the Pirates that, that they always seem to, uh, at least the last couple of years, they've gotten off to strong. At starts. least they give their fans hope. Unlike yeah. the Rockies, yeah, the Rockies, yeah, they they uh, they tend to nose nose dive uh, nose dive pretty quick. But. All right, so these rankings, I think a lot of people would agree with, especially the Dodgers, Braves, and Orioles up at the top. The Orioles might not lose a game in the month of April with their damn schedule. Uh, Rangers and Yankees, <laughs> that's pretty agreeable. You got the World Series champs who have had a great start to their season. Yankees, excellent start to their season. Not to yeah. mention the fact that they just beat the D backs. They swept so, the Astros and then they took two out of three from the D backs. Hard I know to justify. They, them not being yeah that high, right they didn't have a great 2023 season which made me hesitant to put them up so high but when you do that against the Astros and then take two out of three against the good D-backs team this Yankees team seems a lot better than the one we saw a year ago Elizabeth's very mad at you in the chat she says Dodgers at one gross uh hard not to argue argue with the Dodgers being at number one yeah I mean it's between the Dodgers and the Braves right well Astros got swept by the Yankees and and the Diamondbacks didn't explain yourself Explain yourself. Oh my gosh, uh, the Astros are the Astros, and I and I just and I just don't feel like I have to say much more than that. Yeah, if, you're, if you ain't cheating, you ain't trying, and we know that the Astros are trying every single year. Talk the about Ast- disrespect to the Tigers, though, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I thought about the Tigers. They are four and zero, but they've also played all of their games against the White Sox and the Mets, and. Uh, it's it. I, I am I am open to the possibility of the Tigers being on our top ten at some point, but I'm gonna need to see them play a competent baseball team right. before I. That's disrespectful. They're gonna be the like, Mets might be okay. The, the this Astros year, are but, two and five, but they did outscore the Blue Jays nineteen to two. Yes. So, all right. The I, Astros I, are the Astros are really good. I I just think that they. Yeah, it's close. I mean, I'm not saying the Astros are way ahead of the Diamondbacks, but um. You know they they made it to the championship series last year. Like I know they what do you're every doing. Year and, yeah. I know what you're doing. You're trying to motivate the Diamondbacks. Correct. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You should have just left them off, left them off the list. Just disrespected them completely. We know that we know that uh, the you know the majority of the clubhouse like when they're traveling when the Diamondbacks flew to Atlanta yesterday, we expect that they were watching our show as they do every day. And well, so we know, we know Jerry P was definitely he was 100 percent. He wanted to yeah. see if he's hurt. They all ga- he, they he all didn't know gather if he was or not. And he needed to know from our show yesterday. Yeah, they all gather around their device of choice and they watch the PHNX D back show, uh, which that, today they have an off day. So they're going to be especially dialed. They're in here today. alive. I'm pretty so. sure C5 is Christian Walker. I don't know that for sure, but <laughs> it could be. Um yeah, I mean, I guess there's some honorable mentions to give out that didn't make this list. I mean, I I, I think that any of these teams could have probably found their way on the tigers undefeated they did play the white Sox and the mets though yeah right. so that's right. like playing the rockies twice in a row that, a that again that's a little disrespectful to the mets i think oh, although the mets yeah. haven't won a baseball game this year i do expect them to uh to be better Reese, but Reese hoskins has wrecked that organization he correct. ruined them <laughs> correct uh yeah number 10 on our list was really tough for me i went with the guardians just because of how 
how much they demolished uh, have demolished their opponents through through seven games. Sure, uh, but they did open, you know, with I think it was four games against the A's, which is obviously a pretty nice way to to start the season. But the Cubs are out there; they they're off to a four and two start. I'm a little concerned about Justin Steele missing time for them and yep. what that could mean. Yep. That was sort of my deciding factor there. The Reds are off to a good start. Thought about them for number ten. Uh, you know, they certainly could have been there. Uh, the Mariners are another team. They have not started well. They're two and four to start the season, but a team that I still like uh, in the long run. So if they wind up back on this list within a week or two, it wouldn't wouldn't surprise me at all. Well, uh, we will see how things change. And, and of course, uh, we got a long season to go. This is just the beginning of it. But, yeah. uh, unfortunately, uh, for one team in baseball, uh, even, even this season isn't joyful. Even this season isn't exciting. And that's the Oakland A's. Like, we know the situation with the Oakland A's has already been terrible. Um, but yes. I, I, I don't know if, uh, if it could have gotten any worse than the fact that Oakland announced that they are going to be moving to Sacramento for two seasons. Uh, Damon, did you have that tweet by chance? This is ridiculous. Uh, Oakland A's put this out. Of course, they disabled comments as you kind of have to. I'm going to guess that that we took the liberty of including this photo that the Oakland A's did not. No, no, that's probably there? not a photo that the Oakland A's would have okay. attached to right. a tweet, Jesse. That's just a, wanted to make sure. That's a fair assessment. The Oakland A's tweeted out, Sutter Health Park in West Sacramento will host the A's for the 2025 through the 27 seasons ahead of the team's move to Vegas in 2028. Ugh. Mm. What a what a disaster. I mean, this is this is a shout out, shout out hockey, shout out local hockey team coyotes <laughs> this is sort of like the the mullet arena of of major league baseball yeah only they're not taking the coyotes out of arizona yet yeah um but yeah did you really did you say I just, did I, you say yeah. yet i mean i'm just throwing that out there who knows what the hell the the, the the point of this though you know is that this could happen to any team like do we, we do we have will's tweet by chance because will uh who i've known for a while right field will uh he's an oakland a's fan he tweeted this out oh no this isn't this is this is actually good leave this up damon because uh we found this tweet uh and this i think this summarizes everything perfectly yeah. the athletics were a charter member of the american league have nine world series championships tied for third most 15 al pennants serve as the primary team for 14 members of the Hall of Fame and have had strong roots in Oakland for 50 plus years. If this is happening to them, it can happen to anyone. And I think that gives me goosebumps just reading that last part, but it is so absolutely true. At the end of the day, this is a business that the people who own these teams care about the business side of things way more than they care about fans, about history, about tradition. With the Oakland A's going through what they're going through, considering the history that that team has, this can happen to any team. I'm not trying to be apocalyptic. I'm not even trying to tie this back to the Diamondbacks. But I'm trying to say (laughs) is that when it comes down to it, we know the Diamondbacks are having their stadium issues. And we know that there have always been those swirling rumors around that team. We know what I just joked about with the Coyotes. This stuff can happen to us here in the Valley. And that is why it's important to support these teams. Even if you hate the owner, even if you feel a way, if you love baseball, if you love your team, you have to support it. And even then, even then, it might not be enough. Even then, it might not be enough. Because you might yeah. find a, a document one time floating around. Um, do, we, do we have Will's tweet by chance? Um, because this was a document um, that, that was found. It's kind of hard to see there um, because it's just instructions to people at the stadium on handling this situation. There's a discussion here in the in the comments about basically like staying positive and still trying to provide an experience for, you know, for fans. That's a, that's a positive one. But it's the part here uh that that says product that is really concerning I think to everybody and especially to Oakland fans is that they see here that says if you see anything that says rooted in Oakland it must be taken down immediately, meaning merchandise, meaning signs, <laughs> meaning anything, which is a catchphrase of theirs, right? That was a yeah. catchphrase the team was using. Uh, and they also say, try not to highlight products that focus on the name 
Oakland. That part fucking kills me, Jesse, that they literally had to say, stop referencing as much as possible the name of the city of this team. And that's that's disgusting. It's that's yeah. but it's un, like uh, I also get it. I understand why a document like this needs to exist. But really, can't we do it digitally in this day and age? Can't we just text? Like, can we email people? <laughs> do we really need to have this printed where a fan could see this and then put yeah. it up on the internet? Because this is just a bad look all the way around. And it's a it's a terrible situation that every sports fan should be concerned about. Uh, every baseball fan should be upset about this. And this is just, it's awful. It, it's it's awful for, for fans of Oakland. These people have had their entire sports history, you know, kind of taken away from them at this yeah. point. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the reporting that came out today, this team is going to be called the A's between 2025 and 2027. No, no athletics. descriptor in front of that. No, no. Oh, I mean, no I, guess, I guess maybe no. athletics is still yeah, 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 okay. Yeah, but, but I get what you're saying. The like, A's, no not, actual, not the yeah. Oakland A's, not the Sacramento A's, yeah. not the Vegas A's. It's this, it's this, uh, you know, this really weird situation where this this baseball team is going to be playing in a minor league facility for three years that holds, I think it's around 14,000 people. And it, it is, I think, one of the nicer uh, AAA baseball fields, which I, I guess is a, I guess is good. Um, I also will just, uh, there aren't many positives to this situation, but I will give the people of Sacramento a shout out that it's going to be pretty sick for a few years Don't for the people that. of Sacramento uh, to, to have, Stop it. Stop to have right now. Nope. Major League Baseball nope. games in their backyard. Stop it. Um, stop it. I'm Jum- not, try- I'm not trying Jumboy to say said, that any Jumboy of this said it was going to be like cool spring training games and the people came for him, Jesse. Uh, look, I, I know what you're saying and, and it, and it is still, if that you the live in playing. Sacramento, you, you could now like go watch Mookie Betts play baseball in your, in your town. Like that's yeah. really cool. That's really cool. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, I get it. But I'm also saying like, good Lord, like that still is like salt in the wound for people that are Oakland A's fans. Yes, you know what I mean? hundred percent. And I get it too. That Coliseum is awful and people much would, would much rather watch baseball anywhere else at times than there. Not to mention that the resentment towards the franchise in the city of Oakland is going to prevent people from actively going. We're seeing them already organize essentially another boycott against the team this year and and not one where they showed up and tried to vocalize it, not do the reverse boycott thing where they filled up the stadium and showed them how much people love this team. A real boycott where we could be seeing an absolutely empty baseball stadium, you know, for an entire you know season. So, yeah, it's just a terrible situation that I think everybody wishes wasn't happening. Um, but again, let's not forget that if this does happen to, to a team with as much history as, as the athletics have, it can happen to any franchise in sports. So hopefully what we can do is get rich enough for Jesse or I to buy the team and just be uh, a sole owner. And then we'll never move the Diamondbacks as long as we live. Way we can get there is with Arizona Lottery. Now, it might not be (laughs) extremely likely, but we are have an opportunity to win a million dollars in cash uh, and Arizona travel prizes with their brand new Arizona adventure promotion. Uh, There's three ways to play it, including with their brand new tickets that feature some uh, iconic Arizona landscapes. You can also enter tickets online for a chance to win $1 million in cash and travel prizes. But the most exciting way is to check in at 10 geolocated locations across the state uh, that uh, from Flagstaff to Yuma. Uh, You can visit azadventure.com for more details and directions on how to do that. But all of that will give you a chance to win some big cash. Arizona Lottery says proceeds from ticket sales support environmental conservation efforts, among other important initiatives across the state. And they are not just about playing games and winning prizes. Arizona Lottery is also about giving back to the state and its communities. Visit azadventure.com for more information on how you can take an adventure for a chance to win that $1 million in cash and Arizona travel prizes. Of course, a great place to get your Arizona Adventure lottery tickets is at Circle K. Uh, You can go go there, uh, maybe win some money, fill up your car with some gas, fill yourself up with some snacks. And right now, if you join the Inner Circle Uh, program for free by downloading the circle k app today you can save 25 cents off per gallon on your first five phillips and then three cents off per gallon every day after that terms and conditions apply at participating locations visit circlek.com for details but of course you also get those snacks get buy five get a six one free um in uh that circle k i i I'm, i'm losing my train of thought because 
I'm looking at a picture on Twitter right now, Mega Ran, with this wrestler, Jade Cargill. And if you know who Jade Cargill is, mm. you understand why I can't keep an active train of thought right now. Uh, I, I thought hate- you I thought you were losing your train of thought because you were looking at the uh, ump scorecard. No, I'm not. Do, I'm not going to do that. I refuse to do that. Yankees I refuse game. to do that because I have a feel like my blood boils just uh, just you telling me about that. You want to give you, me one fact from that? No, did no. But it? you want to give me one factor from it? I mean, I think the only number that you need to know is plus one point two eight. No, which is the number of runs no. that the New York Yankees no. were apparently no. given, courtesy of uh, oh. courtesy of the home plate umpire. The the top two most impactful missed calls were both against Scott McGuff. One <laughs> one as a hitter and and another as a pitcher, oh, which, which is just the perfect encapsulation of yesterday's game for the Diamondbacks. Uh, I did want to take a moment to uh, welcome Chris Crane to the Arizona Diamondbacks bandwagon. Uh, he is an Oakland fan who is very sad and understandably so. Uh, we, will, we are here. Uh, we are here for you, <laughs> my friend. We, we, there's plenty of room for you here. We love you here. Uh, of course, we love all of you. We thank you guys for stopping by. You can make sure to follow us on Twitter. I am at cap underscore caveman with a K. This absolute maniac next to me is at Jesse N. Friedman. Of course, the people's producer, Damon. He is at Damon Dog, as Dalton Feely said earlier. Uh, that's D A W G. We are Damon's dogs. Bark, bark. bark. Of course, our show is at PHNX underscore D backs, but all roads do lead to at PHNX underscore sports on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. We thank you guys so much for your time. We appreciate you stopping by. Uh, make sure. Yeah, drop a like. Why not? Before drop you leave, like. before you get out of here, Gabby would love it if you drop a like. He said maybe he'll hit more dingers and try to help me out with my future predictions or my bold predictions that I made. Uh, that one's not looking so good. But again, uh, <laughs> yes, welcome, Chris. We're happy to have you. Uh, again, we thank you guys all for your time. We will see you tomorrow. We have a Friday post game show. We'll see you after tomorrow's game. Uh, and then Tommy meantime, Henry against Spencer Strider, yeah, Derek. Here let's we go. Here we go. <laughs> Buckle up, folks. Buckle up. Uh, we thank you again. We appreciate your time. And remember, kids, baseball is fun, but it's so much more fun when your team does not move to Sacramento for a few years before moving to Las Vegas permanently. Y'all silly like the mayor. 